everybody and welcome to lesson four of reading and comprehension. Today's topic is inference. Inference is when you are trying to understand something that's not directly explained and you do that with pictures and with words. And I have a girl there, she's doing a lot of thinking because uh, inference requires a lot of thinking. Um, our first example has a picture and it says the family are going camping and you need to infer the answers to these questions which are where could they be, where will they sleep, how might they cook their food, and what will they do while they're camping. So number one, I inferred they could be in a park or in the desert. Number two, they probably are going to sleep inside that tent or in the car or maybe in a sleeping bag under the stars. Number three, They'll probably cook their food on a grill or maybe put it on a stick and roast it over the fire. And I suspect they will talk and play games and walk in the desert while they're camping. So those are my inferences. Yours might be slightly different and that's, so fun. that's fine. So we'd like to hear how you infer this situation. Uh, let's try one now that doesn't have any pictures. Uh, splat! Oh rats, thought Katie as she stooped to clean up the mess. I hope we have another one. She looked in the fridge and pulled out the carton. One left. Breakfast wasn't ruined after all. So we need to infer what did Katie clean up and how do you know? So let's write down the clues. Uh, we know that the main character is a girl named Katie. We know she's upset um, about something because she said, oh rats. It seems like she dropped something on the floor because there's a mess in front of her. And she's talking about something that comes in cartons. So I know that orange juice comes in cartons. What else could it be? And it's something that comes in cartons and people eat for breakfast. I know, and the only one left, it must be an egg. So I guess or infer that Katie has dropped an egg on the floor. So you get a chance to try it a couple times with number seven and number eight. Uh, write down the clues and make an inference or guess in your book. And then your challenge question today you get to write your own paragraph about inference. Choose first your place or situation. Uh, so I'm going to use camel races as my example. And I'm going to write three sentences um, without explaining directly the camel races, having those words side by side. I won't do that because that's not inferring, or my reader wouldn't be able to infer if I did it that way. So here we go. All the animals were lined up side by side, and the cars were outside the track. There was a loud sound, and they all started moving. After going around in a circle one time, number seven was in the lead. It was a good day because that was my father's camel. So notice I didn't say the word races anywhere, but I described what you would see at the races. And then I let out the word camel at the very end, which should give your reader a clue what to infer. So give it a try and make sure as always to take a picture and send your work in to your teachers. Thanks and we'll talk to you soon.